Hello beautiful people, thank you so much for tuning in again this week for the review of the book Low D Whistle. Now I'm really excited to show you the book Low D Whistle, I absolutely love this whistle. I bought this from bigwhistle.co.uk Again, I mentioned this last time, folks, but do check out their website. I have linked it up here on the little i and in the description down below where you can get a load of incredible whistles right here in the UK. They hold stock of the most fantastic whistle makers instruments, so um, it's definitely worth checking out. Please do head over and just have a look at what they've got. Now, the book Low D Whistle comes in two pieces. It's actually, as the Heidi Whistles, a three-part whistle. It comes with the information sheet which tells you how to assemble the whistle, how to look after the whistle, how to clean and care for it, and how to keep it in its best condition. It's really important with these professional instruments that you maintain and look after them to keep them at their best. Now, as you can see, the whistle comes in some plastic casing to keep everything nice and safe. The top section here uh, does come apart. We have the main mouthpiece, the tuning slide section here, and the uh, whistle joint here, which you only tune from this top section. You never tune from the bottom of this joint. So this part is greased to keep the tuning slide nice and lubricated. And you just slide that on there and you tune from this top section right here. You'll also see that there is a little mark on the whistle here, and that is where the whistle will be in tune when it's warmed up. Now if we open the main body of the whistle, you'll see that on the top here it gives you some instructions. There's a little sheet of paper here and it says push the lower ball into the slide unit keeping both aligned straight and then you'll feel slight resistance and then push the whistle parts together into place. So it's important not to, to twist the whistle at this point. You want to line everything up nice and straight in front, so holes in front of the mouthpiece and push gently but firmly into place, just like so. And then you have your gorgeous, shiny, brass Burke low D whistle. Now, as far as low D whistles go, it's quite a heavy whistle. Uh, there's a lot of brass going on here. The body itself isn't overly thick, but uh, the whole tuning joint and the head, they are quite weighty. It's well balanced, as you can see. I'm almost at the middle of the whistle here. Um, it's a touch heavier, obviously, on the mouthpiece end, which most whistles are. Um, but I absolutely love the look of this. It is huge, and it is just a, a scaled-up version of the high D whistles, which I think is really impressive. So I'll show you some close-ups. Now you can see here the mouthpiece is just like the high D whistles. It is engraved here in the back with the information about the whistle, the maker's signature, the date, and uh, yeah, low D. Viper Burke Whistle. At the top here we have the fipple. Again, it's sort of molded into the mouthpiece, which I really like on these whistles. It's gorgeous and shiny. The tuning slide here, as I showed you earlier, does have a lovely bit of lubrication at the moment. You will need to maintain that on these whistles to keep it moving. You have the joint here in the middle. Again, the main body of the whistle, which slides into the joint up here. You can see that the holes do have a reasonable space between them, but it's not an overly large distance. I can use my finger pads for the top section and actually just about for the bottom section, but I will be using Piper's grip for the bottom half. The fifth hole, as always, is the largest of the holes. Uh, can be difficult to cover on low D whistles if you have slim fingers, but it's not overly large on this one, which I quite like. Now, the body of this whistle in general is actually quite large. Um, I do have thinner, narrower bodied low D whistles, but you'll hear in a moment that this body width and the overall design of this whistle gives it the most gorgeous sound. So let's give it a little play so you can hear how the Viper sounds.
actually adored about this low whistle as soon as I played it was the shape of the mouthpiece. And this actually fits really well from my mouth to my chin. Now this is going to be a very personal preference, but that is why I love this whistle. It's actually really comfortable and it sits really nicely on my chin. Other whistles, I kind of feel that I have to put them in a different position sometimes to get them comfortable in the mouth, but this one for me in particular is really comfortable to play and I love where it sits. Again, absolutely no problems whatsoever with clogging, which I think is fantastic. Um, the sound is utterly gorgeous. It is deep and rich and resonant and clear, still warm and soft and rounded. I absolutely love it. You have a fantastic volume across all notes, including the cross fingering notes, the bell note, and even the high notes. The holes and the spacing aren't difficult to cover as far as low whistles go. It's probably one of the easier whistles that I can play. Some low D whistles I find really difficult, but this one right off the bat I could take out of the box and play straight away without any problem, which again, I really like. I honestly really don't have any negatives to say about Burke whistles. I suppose the only one thing would be that they are an investment piece. This is around 475 euros, so they are expensive, but they are a truly professional instrument. Um, if you're just playing at home, honestly, folks, you don't need this whistle. But if you're playing as a professional musician at gigs, at sessions, in recording studios, um, I can definitely recommend it. It really is a professional quality instrument. The one thing some people might dislike about these whistles because they're sort of brass um, is that they will tarnish. They will get a patina on them. You can polish them a little bit, um, but yeah, there will be a natural tarnish on this whistle. So it won't stay perfectly shiny and gorgeous for that long. It will sort of uh, become a little more dull. And again, there is a little care aspect of it. You do need to take care of these whistles in particular to keep them in their best condition. But with any instrument that you own, um, you will need to look after it in order to keep it at its best. So there really are no negatives to these whistles. They're fantastic. Now, as for the finer details of this whistle, it is beautifully responsive. Um, it's actually really easy to hit those high notes. You don't need a lot of air pressure to get to the highest notes on this whistle, which I think is really impressive. It gives you plenty to play with dynamics wise. You can really um, increase the, the volume and decrease the volume of each note, which just lends so much emotion to your playing. Again, one of the fantastic features of this. This one I bought from bigwhistle.co.uk. Obviously you can buy from there yourselves and um, you'll also find more information on the Burke website as well. That is it from me this week on this fantastic whistle. Honestly, one of my favorite whistles I've ever played. Um, really impressed with these. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Please do hit that big thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications every time new tutorials come out here on my channel. Also, you'll find the high D whistle uh, Burke reviews right here on screen and a few other videos that I think you folks will enjoy as well. Bye.